Hey everybody, it's Eric from Sensory Dad. Uh, just got done doing my 22 push-ups for the day for the Mission 22 Challenge. Uh, big supporters of the troops here, just uh, dropping that in there. Uh, so a lot of posts lately on the different forums that I'm on have been related to your child having a major meltdown uh, and how do you handle it, uh, especially when you get the stares, you get the whispers, you get the, the judgments coming from the crowd around you. The biggest piece of advice I can give parents is it's about you and your child getting through that. Believe me, it wasn't always like that for me. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. So we're on a cruise. We, we do a lot of traveling and we're on a cruise some years back and it's right after our initial diagnosis. And it's like the captain's dinner. My wife's whole family's there. I think we had over a dozen staterooms booked. Uh, so many people had gone on this cruise. We're all dressed to the nines in suits and everything. And we got Leo dressed up and like I said, he, he was just becoming evident that uh, he had the sensory issues. Obviously, dress pants were a trigger, um, the tighter shirts, the buttons, damn near everything we did. Uh, but we didn't really know all of his triggers at that point. So we're at dinner. It's taken a while for the food to get there. Everybody gets seated. It's this huge table in this giant dining room. And we're sat beside a bunch of what looked to be grandparents and very respectable looking people and that. And there was one guy that was sitting at the head of the table, kind of loud and boisterous. He had had a couple cocktails and, and Leo begins to melt down and doing everything I can. I'm hugging him, uh, trying to give him the deep pressure feedback, bouncing him on my knee, uh, letting him snack on the bread and stuff and, and the first courses that are coming out. We, we appeal to the maitre d' and, we, hey, please, if you could get, you know, some rush their food out a little bit, maybe that'll distract them. I mean, we're about to leave the dinner, and this means a lot to my in-laws and my wife and everybody and her grandmother and everybody that's there. You know, it, it means a lot to have a, a nice family dinner, you know, in the Caribbean on this ship. So I'm, I'm trying my best to calm him down, and he is so emotional. It's just a complete breakdown of sobbing and slobber and... And you guys have been through it. You know, it's just a horrible experience to go through. I'm trying everything I can. And so is my wife and everybody else is trying to pitch in. And, you know, it's kind of like when, you know, more than one person tries to give a dog direction. And obviously it doesn't work. So kind of pull him to the side. And meanwhile, this gentleman that looks like he could be a CEO or something, you know, is sitting at his table and he starts to get loud. And uh, he's talking about my kid. You know, and he said, like, Jesus, can't somebody shut that kid up? And, you know, and he, he just keeps going and he keeps going. And the, the you know, my a good friend of mine, Becca, always says the mama bear and, and the papa bear in me kind of came out a little bit and uh, started to get a little perturbed, you know, and, you know, I had never sworn in front of my kids to that point. I mean, now, yeah, I might let a couple words drop here and there out of just sheer anger and frustration. But at that point, I never said a crossword in front of my kids. They, they hadn't heard uh, any kind of profanity. And this guy just keeps chirping and keeps chirping and, and snide comments. And, you know, it's, I feel it's a direct attack on my parenting. And like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, right? And, uh, man, uh, you know, starting to boil. And the straw that broke the camel's back is the guy is, is like, looking around the room, like, for approval. Like, he, he, like, he's gathering a crowd at a rally. You know, like, somebody get that kid a fucking hot dog. And when he said that, it, it was over. It, it, for me, it, it, dude, it, it was over. And I said, you say one more word. And I'm going to throw you off the ship. He says, you hear that, everybody? He's going to throw us off the ship. I said, no, you piece of shit. I'm going to throw you over the side of the ship. Say one more word and try me. And, and I just lost, lost it all. I was shaking uh, almost to the point of, you know, getting ready to just black out and just pummel this man into the ground. Started toward him. My wife gave me the grab of the arm and everything. And she said, why don't you just take Leo or, you know, 
The food just starts arriving. The maitre d's didn't know what the hell was going on. They, they conveniently are all from different countries and, and very diverse, but all of them speak good English. So they knew what was going on, but nobody was going to interject and, and, and make a bad uh, experience for any of the guests. It's certainly not us. We had a crew of like 20 people there. And, uh, you know, after dinner, you know, cooler heads kind of prevailed. The guy never said it, by the way. The guy stopped talking and buried his face in his dinner. And all the other couples around him, you could almost see their embarrassment uh, that, that I called him out and it just really put him in his place. Uh, so after dinner, I went up and, and I apologized to the whole table. Leo made it through and kind of calmed down. We ended up taking off, I think, a shirt or something and the little bow tie we had on him and all that and kind of let him just play a little bit under the table and just eat, you know, whatever he wanted to eat. Just whatever we could do to squash the situation and not ruin dinner for 300 people in this giant dining room, uh, you know, in their elegant dinner. So, you know, guys, I'm not immune to it. Uh, like I said, I walked up to everybody, I apologized, shook the hands of everybody, and every woman there, every woman there, you could see this guy's face was red. Like he, you know, maybe 20 years ago, he, he'd have thought, you know, maybe I'll challenge this guy, and he would have lost. But you, you could see his face was boiling red. But his wife stood up and, like, literally gave me a big hug and apologized and said, we've all got grandkids, we've all been there. And that's the perspective I wanted you guys to take uh, you know, we've all been there. Every parent in the world, I don't care who they are, unless they're, they're literally drugging or beating their kid into submission, has been to the point where you hit your breaking point and the last thing you need is some asshole, you know, piping off and, and making the situation worse. Especially whenever, the, you know, they bring the profanity into it and, you know, Really, really make a, a scene that's bad even worse. So I, the situations like that are about you and your child. So what I do with Leo is I will get to him to where we make eye contact. And I feel that that's the breakthrough. And then, you know, anybody who's, who's got any, uh, you know, autistic or sensory kids sometimes, when they get into that mentality, he gets so mad and he gets that pouty face and everything and he's staring at the ground or at a wall, and he's just kind of shaking like he's so angry. And, and to make eye contact with him and to break through that, that anger force field that he's got up there, you know, I, and squeeze his shoulders, and, and I squeeze pretty hard, and just give him that deep pressure feedback, you know, even, even the joint compressions to where you're, you're separating the little joints of his body and pushing them back and forth. Uh, in a rapid motion for a 10 count is what our OT had us do. Light, you know, kind of blowing in his face. Just, just something that light. And just pull him in tight to you and, and give him a big hug and say, hey, it's going to be okay. You're all right. Don't worry about it. What do you need? What can I do for you? Let's get through this, you know. And, and just be that reassuring voice and damn the people around you. Any of them. Whether you're at Walmart, whether you're at Target, uh, on a cruise ship, at a, a captain's dinner with, you know, everybody wearing $1,000 suits, it doesn't matter where you're at. Your first responsibility is, as a parent is to, to break that, that just tension that your child has because it is legit. It is real. It's something that's so important to them and such a breakdown to, to my son I know he's serious about this. I know it's something that can't be helped. And I have to be there for him first. So that's really the biggest, you know, thing for me. And I think that was a good good thing to happen to us. And it actually drew us closer together as a family because everybody realized, you know, it, I don't care what anybody thinks. I really don't. You know, I've walked away from my career. I don't care. I don't care. What I care about is, you know, this this kid. And I want him to, I don't want him to grow up to be average. I don't want him to get picked on like he did in, you know, some of the schools that he's been in. And because he's a little bit different, you know, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let him be defenseless. I'm not going to let these meltdowns consume his life. And that's really the attacking point you, you know, as a, as a parent of a sensory kid that you need to have. 
you need to be the voice of reason when they're having that breakdown, but you also need to test their boundaries. And the more you test it, you know, it's, it's like a, a resistance to, you know, a, a drug or anything else. You know, the more you test that, that barrier, you know, that they have up whenever they're having that meltdown and you can work them through it and teach those coping mechanisms and skills, it's going to work out a lot better for you. So, yeah, just that's, you know, one story, you know, it's, I've gotten a lot better at it to not let my anger get into me. And I, it, the anger never goes toward my child. It's, it's just always, you know, the stares or the whispers. And I've told you guys the story, my wife in the airport and that, um, you know, we're all we're, we're all there with you. I, I just hope that, you know, it helps you a little bit to know that even though we've gotten to a point to where it doesn't happen too often, Hell, we just went trick-or-treating last week, and we probably had about four breakdowns on the walk. Um, you know, but we're able to squash it in, in less than a minute. You know, and it used to be a debilitating stoppage of whatever the hell you're doing. Uh, somebody take care of the other two kids. I've got to handle this situation, and it required a full parent, you know, and, and you can't really half-ass that. You have to get through it, and it's it's an entire breakage in in the you know the activity that you're doing so it's just that's that's what the biggest point i really want to convey you know because i feel the the emotion when these moms are putting these things up there like you know i just felt like the worst parent in the world and i said you're not you're you're a great parent the fact that you care so much of of the perception and what's going on and and how you're making it through that means that you actually give a damn because look at how many parents just don't even work with their kids don't even put the effort into their cho children uh you know we, we've got to stand together you know as, as sensory parents and we've got to be supportive you know and if, i've said this before if you're ever in a situation where you see that happening you know and just say hey i've been there if you need anything let us know we're happy to help if you're in a restaurant, you're in the mall walking around, uh, anywhere. You know, the playground, some parents will snap at you. I've had parents snap at me. I don't take it personal. You know, it's, it's such a stressful situation to go through when your child is having a complete emotional breakdown. Just hang in there, guys, and, and just stay strong for your child and try to be the, the guiding force that, that gets you through that situation. So just a little rant, kind of just sorry I had to go off, but I saw so many people putting this up, I had to talk about it. I, if you can, drop a like and a subscribe to the page. I really appreciate all the support and everything. Uh, thanks for watching Sensory Dad.